Now we have part two of Prince vs. Elvis. Let's see who wins. Hey everybody, we're going into part two of Prince vs. Elvis. If you're enjoying this, don't forget to hit like on this video and subscribe, obviously. Prince's friend puts out new videos every week. All right, let's jump back into it. The next one is vision and execution of that vision. So here is my thought on this. And this actually just comes from uh, my recent listening to the tracks that you gave me. Mm -hmm. All right. Is I'd, obviously this the story of Prince is he had a vision and he definitely executed that that stuff there. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, he was like, I'm coming in here, I'm gonna make music my life. Uh, I want to produce myself as soon as my record company, uh, you know, I, I want to sign a deal that's going to make me, uh, I want to get Paisley Park, boom, Warner Brothers paid for Paisley Park. Uh, you know, uh, now I want another deal that's going to make me the most money that anybody has ever made. Oh, I don't like that deal now, so I want out of it. So I'm going to do a bunch of stuff that's going to make me a giant, you know. So it's like, it, it, now I'm emancipated, now I can just do whatever I want. And he definitely started executing his vision when he could just literally have any vision he wanted, you know, and there was nobody limiting him. And this, this was the biggest thing that I took away from the tracks because what ended up happening was when I was downloading the tracks that you gave me, I downloaded uh, Jailhouse Rock, but I didn't download the album version. I downloaded a um, one that he did later on in his career, a live version. Oh, okay. Okay. And right before, and it was good. Like it sounded amazing. But right before, so so we're talking about a performance of one of his earlier hits, but later on in his life. And the track starts off with, well, we're going to have to sing this one eventually, so let's get oh. into it. Oh, I, I know. I think I know which one. It, yes. It, it was during the production of his TV special. Like, he was just... <laughs> He was playing. He play around. If you watch all the footage, he plays around. It's not like and I get, I, and I get that. So, and and I get yeah. that. He might have. He might have just been playing around. But the difference between that versus mm -hmm. what Prince would do is, in the middle of a concert, Prince would stop, and he would just start playing a bunch of his hits, and the mm -hmm. crowd would go wild. He would just play like a medley, and then eventually he would say, "I got too many hits. We gonna be here all night." You know, and <laughs> yeah. to me, that's a stark difference in the vision and the execution of that vision, mm -hmm. you know, because from Prince's standpoint, all of these things that from his entire career, they were all those gems. Like, and even mm -hmm. if he didn't play them, you know, entirely or or he didn't play them as often as he would, anytime he pulled that out, he's like, here's a hit, here's a hit, here's a hit, everybody having a fun time. You know, mm -hmm. it was never like, I, I, again, and in, in, like you said, Elvis was playing around and whatnot, but it's, it, the moment that I listened to that, I was just like, oh, okay. So like he, he's almost like some of those artists that get later on in their careers and they're, they start to hate their earlier hits. You know what I no, mean? No, no, yeah. So that's so that was my that was what I was bringing to this conversation. Mm -hmm. You tell me tell me your uh, your side of it, like vision and execution of that vision. His uh, scene, and this goes back earlier. I was talking about his manager, who was Colonel Tom Parker. His manager, um, I felt like, shot down his vision a lot. I, I, I felt like he should have. He had him almost his whole career. Elvis had Colonel <laughs> Tom Parker almost his whole career from 1955. All the way to his death in '77. Okay. Um, I think he should have left him uh, probably in the early '60s because he limited him so much. The big, the biggest star at the time, Elvis. You know, he never toured the world, ever. Oh wow! Yeah, it was crazy. The only time he left the he left the country was when he was in the service, um, serving the military from '58 to '60. And it turns out later on, this is just an example. Um, when he returned to perform full time after all the movies, he really always oh, and people ask, oh, when are you going to tour the whole world? Oh, uh, you know, I'd like to tour Europe, Japan, all that stuff. And it always got shot down because turns out his manager came to his country illegally from Norway. It seemed like every time Elvis got excited, an idea like, for example, another example, a star is born. Elvis mm -hmm. really wanted to do that role. 
but his his manager was always about the money. Everything was about the money, and that's uh, notorious. And, I, and that's notorious about Elvis's manager. And not a lot of people like him, even in the Elvis world. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and he was and he was disappointed about that. It seemed like every time he wanted to do something, I felt like in a lot of ways he couldn't do it because the price wasn't right. But sometimes it's not about the price, you know. It really yeah. Is. Yeah, and it's about you know maybe doing something and feeling good after you did it. And Elvis felt the best about it with uh, the '68 comeback special, and that actually almost went another way too. But thank God it didn't. He had the other right people on his side saying, "Look, we got to do this way." So as far as edu- ed- uh, his vision and the execution of it, I felt like he 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 um he was limited, and that's yeah. sad to say. It really is sad to say. It almost sounds like he had like he had a good vision, but the execution half of that, it it never came to fruition. Yeah, he uh, yeah exactly, and I and he I think he Elvis was a little bit naive when it came to his manager. I think he always felt like he owed something to him, like because he really you know made him huge, and yeah. he just never left him. And by the time Elvis passed away, oh he was taking some. Elvis was just a bank to him by the end of his life. Really, and it really is sad. And if you ever watch another documentary to watch, it's very thorough. Um, some people say, "Oh, it's okay," but I, I I enjoyed that documentary. It was called Elvis the Searcher. It was on HBO. I recommend watching that. I have um, HBO. I will go watch boom. that. I'm sure, it's not- <laughs> you but yeah. I, and, and as far as Prince goes, oh my gosh, that guy. Whatever he wanted to do, he did it. He didn't care if people liked it or not. I mean, it's just the truth. That's what I liked about yeah. Prince. As a he matter of fact, afraid. I think he preferred it when people didn't like it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh, you don't like it too bad. I'm going to do it anyways. You know? Exactly. That's how he was. All but right, yeah, cool. I think he was. I think he was very good at that. And he, deser- he deserves a point. He all really right. does. And Prince gets the point. Um, yeah. All right. We have, three, we have three more sections. So we're right. almost done here. Um, the next one is fashion Ooh. this is technically your one to start off but i'm gonna say because i just started off the vision one That's but right. i will say right up front and i think this 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 kind of comes with comparing two people from like two completely different times right mm-hmm. like this is a weird comparison it's different if you like comparing michael jackson and prince because they were contemporaries they were at the same time uh mm-hmm. that's a lot easier to do than you know, somebody who was the who was the star, but was the star was it 25, 30 years earlier. You know what yeah. I mean? Yep. So, but I just want to I just want to state that for the record is that we are trying to take that into account. Like the fashion, what was his impact on fashion and stuff at that time? Like, yes, Prince is more flamboyant and whatnot, but we kind of need to. We need to have it in some sort of category, you know, because otherwise Prince would just win everything, yeah. you know. So, <laughs> so yeah. So tell me, tell me some about like Elvis's impact on fashion. I think Elvis's impact on fashion is huge. But then again, him and Prince are similar in a way. They both, you know, they both wore custom stuff. I mean, Elvis didn't have it made at his house, but you know, but he did <laughs> wear custom stuff all the time. And that's my, you know, I've never been to Paisley Park yet. I really want to go. Oh my gosh. And ironically enough, you know, the people who run Graceland run Paisley Park, I think. It's yes, same, it's the same okay. company. Yeah. Yes. And my favorite things, because I've been to Graceland three times, my favorite part of seeing Graceland is his fashion. When people think of Elvis, they think of his fashion instantly. They think of the jumpsuits, you know, the big buckles, the tassels, and the rhinestones, yeah. the scarves. So, I I mean, and Elvis, I, I got to say, man, that guy... That guy was a uh, pretty fly. He had he had good he had good fashion. <laughs> he liked Paisley print too. He had he had a lot of Paisley stuff he wore too. Just so you know, that's of his era. So you so I you would definitely so you would give that one to Elvis. Yes, I, I definitely would. I mean, don't get me wrong. Prince did stuff that people wouldn't dare. I mean, no one no one could pull off you know heels and bikini underwear and a trench coat. No one else can do that but him. <laughs> I said that in one of my videos. I think when I was showing oh yeah, before God, the rain. Before yes, before the rain. I don't know why I just lost my train. I said it in that when I was showing the book. <laughs> I said, no one else can do this. <laughs> yeah. So that video yeah. was actually how I found you, which if you didn't know that. Um, yes, I remember. Yeah. yeah. I, was like, oh. I said, oh my gosh, Prince's friend noticed me. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody go subscribe to Johnny's channel. So uh, anyway, so from a from a fashion standpoint, I think you're I think you're correct when it comes to Prince. 
the thing about Prince is that he never, I don't think he ever set any actual fashion trends. And I think I said this in my video that was the Prince versus Michael Jackson, is that what Prince would do is he, he wasn't somebody who influenced popular fashion, like fashion mm-hmm. for the masses. But what he, yeah, pop, what he right. popularized was more fashion designers and stuff like that like like he was friends with Versace and like Donatella Versace and stuff like that yep. and like a lot of the stuff that he would do was more like what you would see on the runway and not what a normal person would wear so for me I would probably say I would probably still give it to Prince but that's just that might be a personal thing um <laughs> you know but I think for me because he was so always counterculture and everything that he would do in terms of fashion so that's the thing right is the prince was always trying to figure out what was gonna be the next hot thing but I wouldn't necessarily say that his personal fashion ever really made an impact on pop culture fashion does that mm-hmm. make sense it makes sense because you know Elvis. He not even just fashion his clothes. You know, I think of fashion. I think of your hair and everything. Like yeah, he, you know the slick back hair, Elvis. The big sideburns. You know, everyone did that. You know, the ducktail. Yeah, look. Well, I mean, that's the thing, right? It's like mm-hmm. Prince was definitely fashionable, but yes. does that translate to having a larger impact on fashion? You know what? I'm. I think I might take it back. I think I might give this one to Elvis. Yes. yes. all right so this is the one um that normally prince wins who is more prolific i don't know all of you know elvis's back catalogs and stuff like that like i obviously prince normally wins this category (laughs) oh you mean like how much stuff he produced and put out you mean yeah just like stuff he put out um how much you know b-sides movies you know projects everything so like the 33 movies that counts towards prolific like, okay. like I can't, I mean, that time that he spent filming those, he could have recorded another album. So I say that those count. And, uh, and every, on all those movies had a soundtrack. That's uh, true. So he really except, did. He recorded another album pretty much every time he did a movie. Mm-hmm. I, all of them had one except for one. His, actually his, his last, his last movie, the concert movie, uh, Elvis on tour. Was, okay. Wasn't was, uh, supported by a soundtrack, but, um. So, you know, that's 31 soundtracks right there. <laughs> and, um, but during his lifetime, he released, I want to say, approximately 711 tracks during his lifetime. 711? Uh, I mean, wow. 711, yes. That's, in, that's including the ones from the movies? Yes. Yes. Okay. But see, they all had about a dozen songs, um, which is about, wait. Well, you know what? I'm probably way off. I just did the math in my head. No, that that can't be right. <laughs> but but some of them were some of them were e, some of them were EPs, like the smaller version, the 45 with like four. Oh, miles. true. Well, I mean, and this is another yeah. discussion, kind of about the times, right? Is mm-hmm. back in that time, a lot of that stuff would be released on seven inch uh, vinyl, mm-hmm. and it would be like, here's two songs, and then they'll ride that for like months. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? yeah. But, yeah. I mean, but Elvis, he. He um flooded the market with stuff. Like he would come out with like three out like like Prince. You know, Prince sometimes would do two a year. I yeah. mean, just I mean, just like how I feel about Prince. Like every time he came out with a release, oh my gosh, I would anticipate the next one right away. I'm like, oh my gosh, can't wait for the next one. Oh yeah. And I'm sure if El- if I was around when Elvis was around, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for the next one. <laughs> I mean, Elvis would come out with about three or four, three or four albums a year usually. Three or four, um, like the the small EP albums a year. I would say he has about eighty albums during his life. Wow, um, but not necessarily full albums, but releases. Is yeah, what you're releases saying. like main releases. Yeah, right. Main main releases. Are we counting he, live ones in there too and stuff like that? Yes. Yeah, live. Okay. Live albums. Because um, he, he had about 150 singles during his life. Wow, that's yeah. ridiculous. So. If Prince usually wins, because even if the other person released more, he's got the vault, right? But if we if we take the vault yeah. out of the equation, um, I think Prince, I don't know the exact numbers like you did. I, I, I should have probably stocked up. But <laughs> he had 39 studio albums. He had um, 
I think it was really just like three or four live albums. He didn't release that many live albums. Um, um, one, two. But he had a bunch of soundtracks. He had a bunch of mm-hmm. side albums, like side projects. Oh, yeah. um, then it's a matter of, for Prince, you, we can't just count Prince stuff. We have to count his Time stuff, his Vanity 6 stuff, his Apollonia 6 mm-hmm. stuff, his uh, Madhouse stuff, his, you know, so like his New Power Generation stuff. So, you know, if you start piling it all on with everything that he did, not just the stuff with the name Prince on it, but everything else, it, it becomes an stuff. it becomes an almost unsurmountable thing to mm-hmm. fight. But it sounds like Elvis is putting up a pretty good fight. I don't know, man. What do you think? Um, I say we tie it. On me. I think we tie <laughs> yeah. it. No, I think we tie it. We, we've done it before. Yeah. Let's do it again. Okay. So then the last category is being able to execute great covers. So I don't actually know like what kind of cool covers. I didn't actually look into that. That wasn't any of the songs you gave me were any uh elvis covers but can you tell me some cool songs that elvis might have covered and and what you think about his execution of those songs this so honestly he this when he got later on in his career in the seven like actually like 69 when he started returning to the studio full time after all the movies he really became like an adult contemporary artist so he covered a lot of songs even in his earlier career like you know hound dog isn't his original version you know that, right? No. What do you mean? He didn't? Oh. Well, he's not the original singer of Hound Dog. No, I did not know that. Yeah, it was a blues singer of Big Mama Thornton. She listened to that version. That's a good version, too. Many many of his songs, um, actually, he covers a lot of people. Um, blue Suede Shoes. A lot a lot of old blues songs that people don't, unless you're like really deep into like old rhythm and blues, like in the 30s and 40s, um, early 50s. He covered a lot of early rhythm and blues songs, like Laudamus mm-hmm. Claudy. Um, he was very good at making songs of his own. Sometimes he made he made you forget he, you know, he's not the original singer of that song. Like, oh, you mean this person sung that? Like right. Blue Sway Shoes is Blue Sway Shoes is a perfect example, which is cut it's a Carl Perkins song. He's that's a perfect example. Everyone forgets that Carl Perkins did that and it became Elvis' song. Hound Dog too. Like a, Hound Dog is probably his biggest hit in the fifties. It sold like six million copies when it came out. And it was a cover. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Elvis, I think he was very good at making covers his own. I think that that sounds, I mean, I I didn't even realize that Elvis had done so many covers like that. That kind of uh, illuminates the, 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 you know, the, the, the fighting, the battlefield here. It, it, it like <laughs> makes it much more difficult. Now see Prince, Prince was a little bit different because the way that Warner brothers marketed him was as mm. a singer songwriter. And when he wanted to do covers, they did not let him do covers. Yeah. Right. Um, and like, and everybody and their mom would be covering a Prince song, but Prince had to have original stuff on all of his albums. That's why the 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 first album that he was no longer with Warner Brothers, he had like six covers on there. Cause he's like, I've been waiting to do these, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So I think that that is pretty cool. Also though, because he couldn't do it in the studio, he would do a lot of his covers on stage um, yeah. where he would cover Rolling Stones. He would cover Sting. I heard him cover uh, Sting once, um, but he would cover tons of people. Uh, some of his biggest songs nowadays are covers. Like the fact that he did the While My Guitar Gently Weeps, you know, guitar solo. Um, awesome. When he did Creep at Coachella. Uh, you know, when he did um, Best of You at the Super Bowl and nobody knew that that wasn't him. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. they were just like, oh, I've never heard that Prince song before. And it's just like, (laughs) like, it was funny too, because I saw an interview with Dave Grohl and Dave Grohl was even like, he didn't ask us to do that. So I'm watching the Super Bowl and like, "Ah, he's covering our song. You know, like it's pretty cool. You know, Prince has done, those are just the live ones, but he's done, you know, on record, he's done uh, a bunch of them. Every Day is a Winding Road, I Can't Make You Love Me, Betcha By Golly, Wow, uh, he did Crimson and Clover. Uh, just a bunch of different covers. Mm-hmm. And every time I listen to the song and I'm like, that is an amazing song. And then you find out that it's a cover and you're like, I would have never guessed. 
who would you give it to? Oh man, you're always throwing the decision at me. <laughs> I'm gonna throw it at you this time. I made the decision yeah. last time. Um, yeah, um, you because know, I think I think my decision would be that it would be Prince. Um, and I would say for me, I think also it's a matter of because he didn't. It wasn't necessarily because I'm covering a song, you know, for hits or for money and you know whatever. Uh, you know, for Prince, it was kind of exploring music, and I want to try this song out and see what I can do with it, and I want to try this one out and see what I can do with it. I want to see how the crowd reacts to it. Like whenever he would cover a song, it was almost like. Uh, like it was playtime for Prince. You know what I yeah. mean? It was it was like, how can I take this and twist it into something that no one's ever seen before? That's how I've always interpreted his his covers of songs. It's, yeah, but it seems like that Prince would always experiment with them, you know? And he wouldn't necessarily put them on an album. You know, Elvis put them on all his albums. Every album has a cover, you know? Mm-hmm. Every album. At least one. More, sometimes at least four you know because he like i said by his later work especially in the 70s he was just like an adult contemporary artist really right you know he did he did all those big songs like i um the first time ever i saw your face and you know all those songs so he was like michael bolton oh god no oh. no because that's like all of michael bolton's big songs are covers like all of his biggest hits they're all covers uh, i i don't want to agree with that <laughs> <laughs> That's not. I, like I don't. Bolton. I like Michael Bolton, though. You know. I don't mean. I don't mean it as an insult. I but know, when I, I think know. adult contemporary <laughs> person whose biggest hits are covers, I think Michael yeah. Bolton. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just. I'm just playing with you. I'm just playing with you. <laughs> so, think, so what you're saying is that you would give it to Elvis? Yes, because I don't think that Prince. He made it his own, but not like make it his own to be like. I'm gonna put it out and become a bigger hit. To, you know what I'm saying? And I'm Elvis didn't necessarily do that neither, but he would. I think that Prince would do it more for the joy of it. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, Elvis, you know, did it. You know, he probably enjoyed it too, but he 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 did it to fill an album. Also, you know, put. I mean, just to put it this way, I mean, I know that Elvis has more covers than Prince does. You know. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, definitely, and. And and like I said, there's a few songs that were released and were hits, and you and Elvis made you forget who the original singer was. Like, oh, oh my that's, gosh, that's definitely true. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, Hound Dog and all that. Mm, that's a hard one. Yeah. But no, I think I would probably give it to Prince. I think I would give it to Prince. And if you are you're hardened and you're like, I'm gonna give it to Elvis, I think we end up with a with another tie. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of do want to give it to Elvis. I mean, I I love Prince's covers, though, but Elvis, you know, he really always made you forget that, you know, oh, that artist sung that? He has a lot of songs like that. Yeah. Wow. Like, like yeah, I mean, like, like I knew, what's her name? The What If God Was One Of Us? What's her Uh, name? Yeah, Joan Osborne. I I knew who sung that song before Prince did it. But Prince did an awesome job, too, though. But I don't think he... As awesome as Prince is, I don't think he made you forget the original artist. Even with Crimson and Clover, I always knew that was an old song. I, I'm really firm with Elvis, man. I think it's I think it's a slightly different thing as well, though, right? Because when Prince has been doing these covers, he's not he, he is he is like almost purposefully covering these big songs that you obviously know who did it. Like, you know, Crimson and Clover, like, yeah. Like, he didn't even do the original version. He did, like, the Jimi Hendrix version that everyone knows. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Joan Osborne's One of Us was such a big hit in the mid-'90s that, you know, you could cover it and you could totally have a much better version, but people are still going to, like, know the original version. I think it's also, again, kind of the constraints of the age, right? Because we're kind of yeah, the we're, timing. We're more in the information yeah. age, you know? <laughs> so mm-hmm. so it does become slightly a thing. So my vote would go for Prince. Your vote's for Elvis, which gives us another tie, which I'm fine with. So it's six for Elvis and seven for Prince. So That's, that is what we ended okay. up with, which means Prince wins, uh, which, there we go. which is fair. Like... 
I don't no, know, man. man. I love them both the same, though, anyways. It was, this was hard for me. It really was hard. Oh, my gosh. Really hard. You know, it, I think it was less hard for me, but <laughs> <laughs> just, just, to, just being honest here, it was less hard for me. But what, but what I enjoy about this sort of exchange is being able to – I learned a lot about Elvis, and it makes me want to go and check out more about Elvis – like cool. so that's that's the cool thing for me personally being a prince you know being a prince friend and being able to talk to somebody who also knows prince but also knows a little bit more about this other really iconic legendary performer that i then mm -hmm. get to learn like so you're you're like my teacher here so that's nice right. yeah and you opened my eyes about a few things too watching your channel like you made me appreciate stuff more i think like the come album like i i never really cared for it and then when you broke it down i was like you know what i appreciated it more and i went back and listened to it i'm like okay now i understand prince's friend made me understand oh <laughs> Yeah, Aww. man, you're really good at doing that. I, li I like you're very thorough and, and breaking stuff down and giving your point of view. I like them. Well, good, I appreciate that. I appreciate okay, no that. Problem. So, uh, with that said, uh, Prince wins. So, fanfare, yeah. fanfare. Uh, but <laughs> just by a sliver, though, it was that yeah. was that, that was really difficult but thank you johnny for being here um could you uh just just real quick kind of give us um an, just another kind of snapshot of your channel tell us what kind of videos you do and where people can find you my channel is prince elvis jackson 88 i major in showing my collections of prince elvis and michael jackson and other topics maybe sh um, sharing some news about releases that are coming out Seal reveals, unboxing of albums, and just tackling different topics. Some of my favorite artists and other things that are maybe in music. Like soon, I would like to do genre videos. I think it'd be great. So check me out on my YouTube channel. Um, I yeah. really appreciate it. And thank you, Princess Frank, for having me on here. It really was. It really is an honor. It really is. You have no idea. Thank you for being on here. You know, it's, if even one percent of my subscribers can learn something from you, that something I could never teach them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's the most important thing to me because you know this is all about kind of learning about more music, and that's oh, yeah. that's kind of the key here. So, so I appreciate you bringing your expertise. Uh, to the channel. Uh, and thank you all for coming and uh, watching this awesome uh, collab and versus video. But now that you've watched it, go share it. Don't forget to share it on all your social media. And you can tag us. We're at Princess Friend YT on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Definitely go check that out. We also have the Patreon drive going on where we're trying to hit 70 patrons uh, by the end of April. So that would be fun if we hit that. Uh, and if you become a patron, you get your name on the wall of gratitude. Go to patreon.com slash princess friend for more details on that. And uh, you can donate as little as $2 a month and help out the channel quite a bit. And as always, may you live to see the dawn. Love you guys. See you in the next video.